Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're getting an update on the Waterbox 7225. What's going on guys, Devin for Reef Dudes. Now we are far, far, far overdue for an update on the Waterbox Peninsula. Um, life has been absolutely crazy the last few months with everything going on in the world. Tank's been a little bit neglected, but we're starting to get things kind of back in check and it's time to give you guys an update, so let's get to it. Take a look at the tank. Overall, things are starting to settle in and they're starting to look pretty good now. There was a few issues up front with nutrients. And I think that's mainly because I didn't have socks. I still don't even have a filter roller on the tank and I added a lot of fish all at once. And on top of that, we had our good old buddy COVID that kind of kicked in and sucked up all of my free time. So the tank was a little bit neglected. I'm starting to get back into it, give it a little bit of love again. Uh, my green slimer had a few tips that were starting to die off on me. I chopped those off the other day and the rest of it start, seems like it's starting to bounce back. Uh, we still got a few patches of cyan randomly, so I did order some of that KZ stuff I'm going to try and see how that does. If not, we got good old ChemiClean, but I've never used the KZ stuff before, so I figured it's worth a try. I also did add a couple new fish. I got a little Caribbean Royal Gamma and a Blue Spot Jawfish, both super pretty fish. I'm actually surprised at how clear the tank is considering there is zero mechanical filtration aside from the chater right now. Now once I get the filter roll on there, it should make it nice, nice and clear. I am still running ozone so that it certainly helps as well. The rock flower rock is starting to fill in quite nicely. Uh, I've been really happy that none of those have actually moved yet, so every one I put on that rock has stayed exactly on it. I think it helped that I used a rock that was full of lots of little holes already, so it gave it lots of spots for its foot to plant. Micromuse, little island or bluff or whatever you want to call it, that big overhang. Um, super cool design, I do love that overhang. And all of the acorns on top are looking good. Like that guy, look how fluffy that thing is. That started as one head four or five years ago, so they're all growing and doing quite nicely. Uh, next over we have our torches. Now these are actually two separate rocks that kind of look like they're combined because of the tentacles of the torch intertwined together and kind of bridge that gap. But we got nice Aussie gold, some dragon soul, some purple, some green, some more dragon soul, and some other random ones. It's kind of a purple purple tips and that guy is super cool. Uh, camera doesn't quite pick it up, but it's kind of a greeny to greeny yellow tips. And that one actually spawned in captivity at Reef, reef Wholesale, so that was really cool. May have to get them on a future live stream about that one. And it wasn't just butted ahead, it actually spawned, so pretty cool. Now the one thing that's kind of crazy is I have certain corals like Pink Hadlock that's encrusting on the rock. You know, that guy's encrusting. And then I had like an easier coral like the Green Slimer where some of the tips were dying off. So it's kind of weird to see ones that just thrive or other ones that in theory should be easy. Had a, a few issues, a little, few little rocks along the way, but... I think everything's starting to kind of settle in now and the nutrients are for the most part back under control so I think things will start being happy from here on out. Now looking in the stand we've got their little control panel where we've got the four versus and I got the three controllers. Uh, there actually is a bunch more gear but it's kind of hiding behind it. Uh, let's go check out the little electronic back there. Elk's about eight so I gotta bump that up a little bit. My demands have keep going up and up almost daily lately so it takes a little bit to give up on it. Uh, now to combat the nutrients issues, I actually stepped up my LG filtration on a few different ways. So we got the AI Prime with a huge running, growing shado. Got the little Reef Dudes AI flaps, all right. Um, and I actually have the church scrubber that was supposed to be on the frag tank. So I decided to throw that on here as well, just to suck back my nitrates and phosphates and kind of double tag team it until I get the new sump. So the new sump's gonna have the built-in filter roller and that's going to do a ton to remove all those particles out before they break down in the water. So I think that's going to make a big difference. So I'm excited to get that coming in. If we go to the other side, you can see the NAS reactor and the NAS 220. So this is a big beast of a skimmer. Um, pulling out nice dark nasties, so it's definitely doing its job. Um, the ATO is fed directly from my containers downstairs, and that goes through the ATK. And then we got the L2 that's run extremely low right now, um, shooting back out to the tank. Uh, for supplementation, I'm currently using the Vertex Calcium Reactor. Um, I do have a custom Geo one coming soon, which is going to be a much bigger reactor. 
and I also got the second chamber on it. So I think that's going to definitely help keep the nutrients a little more stable, or sorry, the dosing stable. Um, biggest thing is that pump rattles and drives me nuts. So having one that's super silent is going to be a huge benefit. And I also picked up a used carbon doser off Derek a little while ago, so that's been a very nice addition because it keeps my CO2 rock solid stable. Now one of the cool things about Peninsula is it's like having multiple tanks in one. Even just walking up the stairs, you get a super cool view of the tank that you know normally it would be against the wall and you'd be missing out on it. So it's really cool. You can kind of create both sides just to have their own little scape, their own little vibe. It really gives you a lot more to play with. It can be a little trickier to aquascape because you got to make sure the rock looks good from all sides, but in my opinion it is 100% worth it and just gives you that much coral space to work with. Speaking of coral space, I actually feel like the tank is a little on the pack side, so I think you've got gonies that you don't even see from the other side and different ones where I'd like to open it up a little bit more and have it qu not quite so packed. So I may work on that over the next month or so once I get the new office frag tank. I might actually clear out a few pieces and kind of try and stick to just like the main favorites in this tank, which will add a little more negative space to the tank. Mainly with stuff like some of these zoas and stuff that are just everywhere all over the sand bed. That, once I get rid of the sign out, will be good. Now you may have noticed the one pest I have to start dealing with, and that would be the cyanobacteria. So hopefully that KZ stuff works on it. If not, I know ChemiClean does the job pretty quick, since I've used that one a few times in the past. But once we get past that, it should be pretty good. Yeah, check that out. So this is right where the blue spotted jawfish built his home. Kind of see right, and there's his little cave entrance, so it's really cool when you're going in there. It would be sweet if eventually the Ghanis grew around it and he was just living in a little Ghani patch. I've also been really happy with how the rock scape turned out. There's lots of caves and archers and lots of different dimension to it, which looks pretty sweet. So once it's covered in acros, it should look pretty amazing. Now the one pest that has snuck into the tank is some Aptasia. Um, I do have it on a few different Zoa frags and a couple different places in the tank. Uh, mainly came from my buddy's tank where I got all the Zoas from. So actually two tank shutdowns that I've gotten both had some Aptasia. So that I got to deal with. Um, so far I've just actually been super gluing over top of it and that works about 90% of the time. Kind of creates a little super glue cyanoacrylate tomb for it. But the problem is every once in a while they seem to find a way to sneak out of it. Case in point, that lovely guy on the side of the clam, I glued over him and he somehow found a crack and snuck right back out. Um, so I actually, actually did order some of those Bergia nudibranchs and I'm going to take the few frags that have a Aptasia on it and put it in the tank with the Bergia. That way it kind of forces them to eat it and clean it off and once I run out of removable frags then I'll release them into the system. Now I do love my wrasses and I certainly have a lot of them. so. Putting them, the Bergia, with the infected frags in a separate tank will give them a chance to clean that out. And once they've run out of frags to deal with, I can put them into the main tank and hopefully they'll clean up the one, like the one on the clam and the couple, the one or two I've seen on the rocks. But for now, I'm just going to keep super gluing them. And once we release the Bergia, hopefully anything that I miss, they'll be able to deal with for me. And a little modification I did is I took off, it normally comes with a glass lid for the overflow and the glass lid works great. However, it is flush with the rim of the tank and I didn't want a funky little cutout over top of the overflow. I find it just makes the tops not quite as rigid. Um, so I got a piece of black acrylic cut that sits just inside the lip and this allows the top to sit on it. Now there's like ever so slight little bit of a rise just from that little overflow but works out pretty well, then I have a nice flush top. So 
So there's been a few little hiccups along the way, but overall I'm really happy with how the tank's coming along. Um, it is definitely packed, it's definitely full. I do think I am gonna thin out a few of the corals in there, mainly on the sand bed, because I wanna see a little more sand bed space. And once I get the, the new office kind of frag system going, then I'll probably clear out a few of these and try and stick to just my real favorites in this tank. Um, aside from that, I'll hopefully get some more updates on this one and do this one a little more regularly. I do have a custom sump and calcium reactor coming soon, so really stoked for that. Um, it's gonna be all nice and matched and make it really sleek, just have a little extra. Um, now this is my last big kind of upgrade is like a display for a long time, so I wanna make sure I do this one right. It's kind of like the dream tank in a way. I'm planning to have a peninsula up here for so long. Now if you guys do have the opportunity to do a peninsula tank, having a tank where you can see it from all three sides, is kind of like having two tanks in one. Like normally you get like the one side in your end cap, but this way I can have corals, I can place them all around and it just gives it like a really cool look. Well, it's about dinner time for the fish, we better feed these guys. But if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, hit that like button for new, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next update.